Boom from New Orleans, <laughs> the Longhorns on New Year's Day. Grab a commitment uh, from Deuce Anthony Deuce Williams. He goes by Deuce, uh, a linebacker edge prospect out of Pearlands Shadow Creek High School. It's one of the uh, more talented programs in the Houston area. Uh, Williams committing to Texas over a host of other suitors, uh, including Ole Miss, uh, Notre Dame, uh, Auburn, you know, you name it, uh, teams across the state of Texas as well. Uh, CJ, uh, you've watched him play. You've talked to him uh, before. What is it exactly about Anthony Williams that he brings to the table uh, that the Longhorns were interested in? Yeah, it's the length and the athleticism at the linebacker position, which has been, you know, a common theme when you look at the Texas recruiting over the last couple of years at the position. 6'3", about a buck 95 right now, can grow into a 215, 225 range eventually down the line. That right there is very encouraging. And I think in a loaded state, uh, or a loaded linebacking crop in the state of Texas for the 2025 cycle, to see the Texas staff go out and take Williams this early is very encouraging about how they project and view him down the road. I, I think it's interesting because he had talked to Sark earlier in the week, uh, committed, uh, did all the stuff. So we, uh, behind the scenes, we knew this was coming, uh, but still uh, today a big day for the young man and, and his family. He's not just a uh, football player, by the way. He's a multi-sport athlete. Uh, we talked about this and how much that matters. He's also a varsity basketball player uh, for Shadow Creek. Uh, your thoughts on on what Texas is really looking for. You mentioned the long levered players, but I, I think that they're trying to get more all-around athletes and more athleticism and speed on the field at every position possible. I, I think that that's what he kind of fits as, you, as we watch this film. And, uh, you know, you can see the burst, right? You can see the long length uh, in, in, in his play. Yeah, you absolutely can. I think the most important part of that is where they use him at Shadow Creek is very similar to how Texas uses a Maurice Blackwell at, 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 on the university or at, at Texas currently. Sorry. Uh, but using him in that space, he's going to be tested a lot in coverage. And I think because of those those uh, multi-sport backgrounds, obviously with basketball, the hand-eye coordination is there. Being able to catch a football at the linebacker position is going to come more fluidly for a guy like Anthony Deuce Williams because he's done it so often in other sports. And so I love that. I love getting athletes that can tackle near the line of scrimmage and also still be effective in the passing game. That's what I see in Anthony Williams. And there's there's certainly going to be an adjustment in terms of the the route concept understanding at the next level that comes with every uh, high school prospect at this range, but you see the tools on film. And I think that's very encouraging because again, you, you, you seldomly see him rush the passer, but when he does, he's very effective. And that long length will help him defeat blocks and get to the quarterback. Because again, six, three with long arms, hard to teach. You know, you, know, you were down in Orlando uh, last couple of days and you saw two guys that are, are similarly situated. They're not, I mean, they're different types of players in Colin Simmons and Zena Umiozulu, but they also have that wide wingspan uh, that kind of just swallows people up. Uh, it's kind of clear that that's where uh, Texas is headed. Now, I had a couple other notes. This is the fourth commitment for the Longhorns on the recruiting campaign. Quarterback K.J. Lacey started it out uh, out of uh, Mobile, Alabama. Amory Winston or Amari Winston uh, out of Calhoun, Georgia. The tight end came in second. Then Brandon Brown, a big defensive tackle that Texas is just in love with out of Ogale, Florida. This is the first, uh, uh, Deuce Williams is the first in-state commitment for the Longhorns, right? But he's gonna, he's not going to be the last. The Longhorns also have a big recruiting weekend coming up January 20th, right? Is that the first big junior day of the year we've been talking about? Yeah, January 20th is going to be very busy for that 2025 class. And I think it's important now, Bobby, is Texas has a, an in-state face that they can point to and say he's going to be in this class now. That's important because you can almost bet uh, that he will be there. You know, he's going to be in Austin for that January 20th uh, official or, you know, junior day, if you will. That is now important for the rest of that cycle and the targets in that class to say, all right, now I know who I will be potentially playing with. There's a long way to go, obviously, until the next signing day. But to get that camaraderie and those connections built ahead of time is very important for the rest of the cycle. Well, I'm looking at it, and you know, I mentioned uh, all those guys that are already committed. He's also got a guy on his team that Texas is very much after as well, Kobe Sellers, a defensive back. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, one of the top defensive backs in the state. Uh, big fan of Sellers. He's sticky in coverage. I think he's uh, more suited to a field cornerback at the next level. 
uh, not necessarily the longest and lengthiest of, of guys that you'll see at the cornerback position in this cycle specifically, but the instincts are there. And then coverage, you certainly see uh, the physical tools that will translate to the college level. I know that Oklahoma is a, is a big big time uh, competitor in that recruitment as well, but Sellers is a, is a guy who has been around campus quite often. He's visited multiple times uh, dating back to the summer of 2023. And now that we're into 2024, uh, it would not be surpri- surprising to see him also on that visitors list uh, for January 20th to start the season out strong. Let's look at uh, this a different way, if you don't mind. Uh, Texas overall now at four commit- commitments. It seems to me, CJ, that they're getting more early commitments because mm-hmm. of the recruiting momentum they that they've gathered over the last two years. And then this college football playoff appearance uh, combined in with that. It's tip. It's a tipping point where now, I mean, they may have to slow down some commitments to make sure they're getting the right guys because you know how this is. I mean, Texas has been through it before in the Mac Brown era where people came to visit. They wanted to commit. Well, Steve Sarkeesian may need a, like, hey, hold, hold on. Each and every one need to be uh, verified and make sure they're the guy you want over somebody else that may come available later or may be a better player even, even though this guy, the, the next guy up, whoever it is, um, might not be one that they want to take a commitment from. So it, it's very interesting that uh, obviously Deuce Williams in the class and they like him, et cetera. But my point being that Texas is in a rare situation right now where they're, they're going to be picky and, you know, they can't just – throw out 70 scholarships willy nilly in the state of Texas and not expect some guys to try to commit. And then did they take the right ones, et cetera? I mean, you got choices, not only you mentioned a linebacker, this, this being one of them, uh, but wide receiver this year is going to be very interesting. Exactly who tries to go in on. Uh, We know that there's some other positions that are similar. Uh, And then you have going into the SEC like Texas is. And so you have the entire Southern region of the United States where they've had success in Florida now. Right, CJ? Uh, they've had some success in Alabama. In Georgia, they've got a commitment. You know they're going to recruit New Orleans. Uh, they, they, Jabari Antoine's another one down in, in uh, New Iberia, Westgate, a defensive back that they're going to look at. So they've got all these ties now and all this momentum. Uh, I, know, I know Deuce Williams is on board, but they're going to have to be uh, judicious, I guess is the best way to put it, as it relates to the next you know handful of commitments and how they build this class out. Yeah, I think this is going to be a little bit of a learning curve for Sarkeesian and his staff. Obviously, when you get to a new program, you want to get to this point where you can kind of have the pick of the litter whenever you start truly evaluating and offering, you know, kids on your board. But one thing that is encouraging whenever I look back, you know, to previous recruiting cycles under Sarkeesian, it does take a while for his classes to normally start really going. You know, we we normally see most of that action occur around the June official visits and right around the 4th of July. I had a schedule currently in the 2025 class. Obviously, four guys uh, on January 1st is something that we haven't normally seen in these classes. But I do think the idea of getting looks at these guys when they get to campus for the the early uh, junior days early in the year and then again on the official visits will really be when you see the full bulk of these commitments come in. And it's been a full evaluation. You know, you, you're going to get four or five more months of these guys developing their bodies and really getting an understanding of what the prospect could be whenever they are eventually coming to campus a year from now. So I think if they maintain that timeline and really start to see, you know, just how the next six months transform and, 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 and start really changing the bodies of these prospects, that will really be a testament to how, committed this staff will be to finding the best possible players for the class, which there will be plenty of, because like you said, the college football playoff momentum, it, it's hard to, to negatively recruit Texas right now. It's the full package from a football picture. All right. Well, I'll, I'll see you down in uh, New Orleans uh, later uh, today. We'll be on all day long. If you guys get a chance, uh, we're at Manning's in the uh, French quarter slash warehouse district uh, of New Orleans. We're going to be live having a bunch of different former players going on with us all day. Please join us, uh, if you will. And I've got to say this before I let everybody go. Very excited about Anthony Williams, Deuce Williams, and his pledge to the University of Texas. Uh, I grew up, I literally, around the around the block from Pearland uh, growing up. So it's always nice to see a, a young man from that area of the uh, of town in Houston uh, commit to the Longhorns. Uh, for C.J. Vogel, I'm Bobby Burton. And you know what? I'm going to say this. Anthony Williams, hook him, buddy. <laughs>